When you stake a proof of stake crypto like ETH, you earn a yield for securing the blockchain. But what if you could use your staked ETH to secure other chains besides Ethereum and earn an even higher yield? This is the idea behind restaking, a new crypto primitive that's been pioneered by Eigenlayer. Over $10 billion of ETH has so far been restaked. And this has everyone wondering about the potential of the Eigen token. And that's why today we're going to tell you what Eigenlayer is, explain how it works, and see whether its Eigen token could become one of the largest cryptocurrencies in Ethereum's ecosystem. Stay tuned. I'll start by saying that nothing in this video is financial advice. It's purely educational content intended to inform you about Eigenlayer. And I'll also note that at the time of this video, nobody on Team Coin Bureau holds Eigen in their personal portfolios. And of course, this video was not sponsored in any way. But that should go without saying. Now, if you do want to know which cryptos we hold, well, then become a member of the Coin Bureau Club. In addition to seeing our portfolios, members get weekly reviews of promising small cap altcoins, which they vote on. You also get daily crypto market updates from our research team and real time alpha in our exclusive members discord. You can become a member of the Coin Bureau Club using the link down below. With that said, Eigenlayer was founded by University of Washington professor Sriram Kanan in mid-2021. Sriram revealed in a 2022 interview that he got into crypto in January 2018. This was basically because he was fascinated by peer-to-peer -peer technologies, and Sriram did his PhD on P2P wireless networks, by the way. And after getting into crypto, Sriram noticed that it was easy to build decentralized applications on Ethereum, but it was quite hard to build decentralized infrastructure there. And obviously, Sriram created Eigenlayer to make building decentralized infra on Ethereum as easy as building dApps. And of course, this attracted the attention of some very big investors. Eigenlayer raised over $64 million in 2022 and 2023 before launching its initial mainnet in mid-2023. Crypto VC A16Z invested another $100 million in Eigenlayer earlier this year. The final mainnet went live in April. Uh, the Eigen token only launched earlier this month, but we'll come back to that a bit later. Now, Eigenlayer was built by an American software company called Eigen Labs, and its ongoing development is coordinated by the Eigen Foundation, which is a nonprofit which is based in the Cayman Islands. It's also important to note that Eigenlayer appears to have close connections to the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, back in May, Ethereum Foundation researcher Justin Drake disclosed that he had been allocated Eigen tokens, which would be worth, quote, millions of dollars. And this was in exchange for advising Eigenlayer. Dankred Fiest, another Ethereum Foundation researcher, subsequently disclosed the same advisory role. Sririm was asked about this potential conflict of interest in an interview, and he revealed that Eigenlayer had been working with the Ethereum Foundation for actually quite a long time. In fact, Sririm specified that they had been working with the Ethereum Foundation researchers since, quote, day zero. What's interesting here, though, is that Justin and Dankred had asked permission from the Ethereum Foundation before formally becoming advisors to Eigenlayer. According to Sriram, the Ethereum Foundation gave them the green light, so long as they didn't claim that the foundation was involved in any way. And this is interesting, because the Ethereum Foundation has quite a history of being directly and indirectly involved in the development of Ethereum's infrastructure, uh, such as its node clients, for example. And you'll know this if you watched our video about who controls Ethereum, which is a must if you haven't already. Uh, the link will be down below. Now, the Ethereum Foundation's apparent involvement with Eigenlayer makes perfect sense when you realize that this novel protocol has the potential to fundamentally reshape the incentives around Ethereum and ETH staking. This is literally why Ethereum Foundation researchers have been so involved. In a November 2023 presentation, Justin warned that Eigenlayer's restaking mechanism could be a threat to Ethereum's decentralization, and even a threat to Ethereum itself. He explained that this is because restaking is analogous to maximal extractable value, whose incentives took years to address. Oh, and FYI, MEV is essentially where validators rearrange transactions in a way that benefits them the most. 
As scary as this is, it simultaneously underscores the importance of Eigenlayer as a crypto project and highlights just how much potential Eigen could have. But again, we'll come back to that later. And meanwhile, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to smash that like button to let us know and subscribe to the channel and ping the notification bell as well so you don't miss our next altcoin update. Now, this ties into how Eigenlayer works. It consists of four components, restaking, operators, delegation, and actively validated services or AVSs. As mentioned in the introduction, restaking involves using ETH that's already been staked to secure additional chains or rather services to earn more yield. Notably, Eigenlayer allows staked ETH to be used in its protocol. So if you don't have the minimum 32 ETH required to self-stake, you can still restake using liquid staked ETH from DeFi protocols like Lido Finance, which don't have a minimum ETH stake to stake. According to DeFi Llama, around a quarter of all the restaked ETH in Eigenlayer is liquid staked ETH. As for the operators, they're tasked with running the ABSs. In practical terms, this means finding restakers who are willing to commit their stake to securing the AVS software being run by the operator. The restaker and the operator must agree to cooperate before an AVS can be secured by restaked ETH. And this agreement process is referred to as delegation. And Eigenlayer's documentation specifies that a restaker, or rather a delegator, can also be an operator. According to the recently updated Eigenlayer Explorer, there are over 1,700 operators and over 155,000 restakers supporting 19 AVSs, only one of which is currently offering additional yield. And this leaves the AVSs themselves, which are effectively infrastructure services for Ethereum. Uh, per the Eigenlayer website, AVSs include, quote, data availability, decentralized sequences, bridges, oracles, event-driven activation, MEV management, low latency settlement, single slot finality, etc., etc. The largest AVS is EigenDA, Eigenlayer's data availability layer. EigenDA launched as part of Eigenlayer's final mainnet launch, and its initial purpose was to provide the data infrastructure required for Eigenlayer itself to function. EigenDA is also used for other things, like supporting Ethereum Layer 2s, for example. Without getting too technical, a Layer 2s need data from Ethereum to process transactions. Fetching this data is expensive due to Ethereum's high gas fees, although less so after the Denkun upgrade. Fetching Ethereum data from data availability protocols like EigenDA instead is cheaper and faster. And I'll note that yes, at a technical level, Ethereum layer 2s that use data availability layers instead of Ethereum are technically validians, so no need for the wisecrack comments. Now this would explain why EigenDA is the only AVS offering an additional yield of 1% on the restaked ETH. Logically, this means that any ETH being restaked with operators that support the EigenDA AVS will earn an additional 1% on ETH's staking yield. And given that this is currently around 3.3%, it will bring in around 4.3%. The caveat here, though, is that the yield for restaking with ABSs can be increased with token incentives. For example, Eigenlayer could airdrop Eigen tokens to restakers, which of course increases their annual yields for the restaking. The Eigenlayer app suggests that these Eigen token rewards are active, but it's unclear exactly what they are. Anyways, by this point, you're probably asking why Ethereum experts like Justin are so concerned about Eigenlayer. The short answer is slashing risk at the blockchain level. You see, the AVS software being run by operators comes with requirements that must be met to ensure that the AVS itself works properly. And if this sounds familiar, that's because it's the same incentive found on most proof-of-stake blockchains. Namely, validators need to be up and running 24-7, have no technical issues, and be honest to properly secure the blockchain. If they go offline, experience a technical issue, or act maliciously, their stake is slashed. Similarly, AVSs can incentivize operators to run the AVS software properly by including slashing. The catch is that the stake doesn't come from the operator, unless the operator is also a restaker, but the stake comes from the restaker, which is why delegation involves consent from both parties. 
when you remember that the stake being delegated is also being used to secure Ethereum itself, you start to understand why this could be a serious problem. For instance, uh, there could be billions of dollars of restaked ETH that gets slashed on one of Eigenlayer's ABSs, which slashes staked ETH on Ethereum itself. Now, this could theoretically make the Ethereum blockchain vulnerable to attack. In practice, this doesn't seem to be a risk yet, as it doesn't look like any of Eigenlayer's ABSs have implemented slashing. Srira mentioned in that August interview that slashing on Eigenlayer won't come until Q4 of this year. An Eigenlayer's last update about its slashing mechanism was posted in September, and we'll leave a link to it in the description if you're interested. Now, this relates to Eigenlayer's tokenomics. Now, Eigen is an ERC20 token on Ethereum, and you'll recall that it only launched earlier this month. Aside from better market conditions, Eigen's late launch was presumably because launching the token after Eigenlayer is complete reduces regulatory scrutiny. Anyhow, the documentation describes Eigen as a, quote, universal intersubjective work token, which can be simply understood as meaning that it's used for staking and governance. The first blog post about the Eigen token from the foundation specifies that Eigen can be staked to secure certain ABSs, like Eigen DA, and also to govern the ABSs themselves. This governance is more significant than you might think. To recap, Slashing restaked ETH on Eigenlayer could result in slashing staked ETH on Ethereum, which could threaten its security. I suppose that this happens, but the slashing on Eigenlayer happened because of some critical error. It stands to reason that you'd want some sort of a way of stopping this slash from happening. And one way to do this would be to fork Ethereum itself so that the staked ETH back in the restaked ETH doesn't get slashed. But this would require an unprecedented amount of coordination. And if this sounds familiar, well, that's because Ethereum experienced something similar with the DAO hack back in the day. More about that in the description. Moving on. Now, the other way to stop the slash on Eigenlayer would be, well, to stop the slash on Eigenlayer itself. The Eigen token's purpose is to make this possible. In other words, the Eigen token's purpose is to ensure that any critical errors on Eigenlayer don't affect Ethereum, which is, again, very significant. What's crazy is that this would still involve a fork, but it would be a fork of the Eigenlayer protocol voted on by Eigen holders, instead of a fork of Ethereum itself agreed to by all its stakeholders. If someone tries to fork Eigenlayer and the community votes against the fork, all their Eigen tokens are burned. And I'll note that none of what I've mentioned is actually live yet. Like Eigenlayer slashing, Eigen staking and governance aren't live at the time of shooting and will likely come after the slashing. And this should make you understand why the Ethereum Foundation and its researchers have been so involved. In any case, details around Eigen's distribution were first revealed in April, and you probably heard that Eigenlayer changed the distribution in May to appease the community after it got lots of backlash. In the end, Eigenlayer's initial supply of 1.68 billion was allocated as follows. 45% to the community, with 15% going to airdrops of early restakers, 15% for future initiatives, and 15% for ecosystem development. Then we have 29.5% going to investors, and 25.5% to early contributors. Eigen has an initial inflation rate of 4% per year, which can be adjusted via community governance. Regarding vesting, it seems that the supply allocated to early restakers was immediately unlocked. The tokens allocated to the contributors, investors, and the ecosystem fund are locked for one year and will then be unlocked monthly until October 2027. The remainder is subject to community governance. The fact that the entirety of Eigen's initial supply was airdropped to restakers would explain why its price action has been quite poor out of the gates. Suboptimal market conditions haven't helped either. At a current market cap of just 700 million, it just barely cracks into the top 100 by market cap. On the one hand, this is a bit surprising because Eigenlayer's TVL is more than 10 times larger than Eigen's market cap. And for context, many believe that the market cap to TVL ratio tells you whether a DeFi protocol is undervalued. In Eigen's case, this ratio would suggest that Eigen is more than 10 times undervalued. On the other hand, though, Eigen's small size isn't that surprising because Eigenlayer's value isn't derived from its TVL. 
it's derived from the adoption of its AVSs that its restaked ETH is securing. As mentioned earlier, the Eigen DA seems to be the only AVS with lots of adoption, and that's because it's used by Eigenlayer. In other words, Eigenlayer's value is currently derived mostly from EigenDA, whose usage is in turn derived from Eigenlayer, where most users are only there to get whatever incentives it's offering. <laughs> On that note, it's just easy to forget that Eigenlayer is just another layer in the staking tech stack. And some of you may have heard about liquid restaking, wherein you can make your restaked ETH freely tradable to use in DeFi protocols. It's like liquid staking, but riskier. Chances are that lots of Eigenlayer's TVL is coming from people restaking ETH to get incentives offered by liquid restaking protocols. Whatever the case, it's clear that the token currently doesn't have any strong demand drivers besides speculation, which isn't high given that Eigen is extremely complex compared to most cryptos. Try explaining restaking to someone who's not native to crypto and then convince them to ape into Eigen. Actually, don't bother because you won't succeed. Anyhow, it looks like Eigenlayer's long-term potential ultimately depends on the AVSs which launch an Eigenlayer as well as the liquid restaking protocols that leverage Eigenlayer. Speaking of which, Eigenlayer actually acquired a liquid restaking protocol in June called Rio, of course foreshadowing a native restaking solution. And this pertains to Eigenlayer's upcoming milestones. To refresh your memory, we've covered a few of them already. The introduction of slashing, staking, governance, and apparently native liquid restaking. They are also planning a series of incentive programs, one of which is currently ongoing. Although Eigenlayer doesn't have a roadmap, it looks like it's going to keep developing additional AVSs besides EigenDA. And this is something we've gathered from watching interviews with and presentations by Sririm. And the Eigenlayer website even seems to have a sort of a list of AVSs that could be coming up. The first is data availability, which is of course already live. The second is decentralized sequences for layer twos, which are badly needed. The third and fourth relate to optimized bridging, which is also badly needed among Ethereum's layer twos. MEV management and single slot finality are two others that stand out. And that reminds me, the EigenDA website notes that it plans to continue scaling its throughput to accommodate any and every use case that requires data availability, and apparently not just on Ethereum. And that's because EigenDA has data about every blockchain in crypto, which is actually quite impressive. That being said, Sririm specified in that aforementioned interview that they were only working on Ethereum and had even rejected requests to work on other crypto projects. He also revealed that the yield on restaking to support the EigenDA is coming from the 10 ETH that Eigenlayer is giving out as rewards each month and not from actual fees. And this reminds me of what Sriram said in that 2022 interview, which was that only a handful of AVSs would be likely to generate most of the yield offered on restaked ETH. It's safe to assume that Eigenlayer believes that EigenDA will be one of these few AVSs that generates most of the restaking yield. If that's the case though, then it could increase Ethereum's overall centralization, as Eigenlayer could find itself directly or indirectly supporting most of Ethereum's infrastructure via EigenDA, if it gets adopted that is. This centralization could be even more acute if Eigenlayer develops other widely adopted AVSs. And this brings me to the challenges that we foresee for Eigenlayer. The first challenge is adoption. In case you forgot, it doesn't derive its value from the ETH being restaked through its protocol. It derives its value from the AVSs that leverage this restaked ETH for security, and that's where the adoption is lacking. While it's true that Eigenlayer is a brand new protocol, it's also true that its key selling point is its AVSs, which are only valuable insofar as they are secured by large amounts of restaked ETH. And again, the only reason that ETH is being restaked in Eigenlayer right now is for farming purposes, be it on Eigenlayer or the liquid restaking protocols built on top of it. Newsflash, but this isn't sustainable. In the absence of organic yield from AVSs, restakers will only be incentivized by artificial yield coming from token rewards. And these are only valuable so long as the crypto market is rallying and investors are aping into the tokens being given out as rewards. And this ties into its second challenge, and that's competition. Eigenlayer isn't the only restaking protocol out there. But more importantly, 
it's practically competing with other DeFi protocols for the ETH required to secure its AVSs. If there are higher ETH yields elsewhere, be it on a competitor or a different protocol like Aave, Eigenlayer's TVL will tumble. The consequence of this is that Eigenlayer's AVSs will be less secure, which will make them less attractive to use as an infrastructure solution. And this will result in even lower yields, of course, causing even more ETH to migrate to other restaking and DeFi protocols. The result would be a slow death spiral that could threaten Ethereum if one of these ABSs becomes integral to its operations. And this relates to Eigenlayer's third challenge, and that's the problematic incentives it could create within Ethereum's ecosystem. Take a second to consider that the risk Eigenlayer poses to Ethereum doesn't necessarily come from Eigenlayer itself. It comes from everything that's built on top of its protocol. The elephant in the room here is the growing number of liquid restaking protocols, which present an exponentially larger threat to Ethereum than Eigenlayer. Imagine that hundreds of millions of dollars of liquid restaked ETH is liquidated in a DeFi borrowing protocol where it's been used as collateral. One of the many side effects of this could be hundreds of millions of dollars of restaked ETH being removed from the AVSs, which could leave it vulnerable to attack. If that AVS did get attacked and it provides some critical function to Ethereum's ecosystem, the dominoes, they could keep on falling. But as Sriram stressed in that August interview, the restaking genie is out of the bottle and it can't be put back in. Now that this primitive has been introduced, it's going to keep growing on Ethereum, whether we like it or not. Again, this is exactly why Ethereum Foundation researchers have been so involved. We could make a whole separate video explaining all the ways that things can go wrong, and it's safe to say that there's been no shortage of reporting to that effect. But it seems that nobody is bothering to ask. What if restaking works as intended? What if Eigenlayer secures the next generation of infrastructure? One could argue that the possibility of success is even more terrifying than the possibility of failure. And that's just because it would have profound implications for not just crypto, but the world in general. It would mark a paradigm shift in the way that all kinds of infrastructure are developed and governed. Not only that, but it would result in millions of crypto investors regretting that they didn't take the time to understand how Eigenlayer worked and that they ignored the Eigen token when it launched. Make no mistake, this could be the next big thing. Or it could be yet another unsustainable crypto protocol. Let us know which one you think Eigenlayer is in the comment section down below. And that's all for today's video. If you learn something new, be sure to smash that like button to let us know. And if you want to keep on learning, why don't you subscribe to the channel and ping the notification bell as well. And if you want to help others learn about Eigenlayer, why don't you share this video with them. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. This is Nick. Out.